Gabby, and today in our part two of The Last of Us videos, we're going to be talking about Ellie's immunity. A major driving force behind the plot of the first Last of Us is Ellie's immunity to the disease that has destroyed the world. Today, we're going to talk about the basics of immunity. Our immune system is a complicated, fascinating operation. Our bodies have evolved various methods for fighting off foreign invaders and keeping us alive. Commonly known as white blood cells, leukocytes are the soldiers of our bodies, sweeping in to destroy or contain foreign invaders. Leukocytes are divided into two groups, phagocytes and lymphocytes. There are a few different phagocytes and two different lymphocytes. Here's a quick rundown of what they do. Phagocytes are types of leukocytes that will surround and absorb pathogens to then break them down and destroy them. Neutrophils are the most common type, accounting for about half of all of our leukocytes and are typically the first responders to an infection. See, when our body is under attack by a bacteria or virus, the infected and damaged cells will release proteins called chemokines, which attract neutrophils. Once they arrive, the neutrophils quite literally eat whatever pathogen is present by absorbing them through a process called phagocytosis. Once the bacteria or virus is inside the neutrophil, the cell uses enzymes to break down and degrade the pathogen. Gross fun fact, these white blood cells are the primary component of the pus you might see on a wound. Next, we have monocytes. These are the largest type of leukocyte and have roles in phagocytosis, antigen presentation, and cytokine production. Antigen presentation refers to the process of, unsurprisingly, presenting a fragmented antigen to a lymphocyte, the other type of leukocyte. Antigens are toxic or foreign substances that trigger an immune response, with each pathogen having specific antigens associated with it. This is basically the foundation of immunity. Cytokines are just signal proteins, with chemokines mentioned earlier being a subgroup of cytokines. Monocytes in the bloodstream seek out invaders, similarly to neutrophils, and when they enter the tissue, they differentiate into macrophages, which basically do the same thing, along with patrolling for dead or dying cells and removing them. They can be thought of as the garbage trucks of the immune system. Let's move on to lymphocytes. There are two types of these guys, T cells and B cells. While T cells work like our previously mentioned leukocytes to destroy foreign invaders, B cells have a less violent role, so to speak. See, B cells are where the specificity of each antigen comes into play, because B cells are the ones that remember them. More specifically, B cells will produce proteins called antibodies that will recognize their designated antigen, which is unique to each individual pathogen. B cells are the primary leukocytes that determine the efficacy and function of vaccines, which introduce a small amount of a certain pathogen that is then recognized and remembered by your B cells. This prepares our immune system for a potential full-scale attack. Basically, B cells give the other leukocytes a heads up on what to look out for should you come into contact with that pathogen. Now, there are two different types of immunity, innate immunity and adaptive immunity. Innate immunity basically just refers to our body's immediate, non-specific reaction to the pathogen, such as the way neutrophils or monocytes work. Adaptive immunity is what we can thank our B cells for. It is the antigen-specific immune responses that we develop as we are exposed to different pathogens. So in Ellie's case, when she was bitten by an infected human, the antigen specific to that pathogen entered her body and was recognized and cataloged by her B cells. Luckily for her, her innate immune system was able to somehow fight off the initial infection. The game doesn't really give us much science to go off here, aside from Marlene telling Joel that the cordyceps inside Ellie have mutated somehow. This is definitely plausible. A mutation could have made the fungal cells infecting Ellie more susceptible to phagocytosis, possibly altering their protein composition or chemical structure. However, they mention that the fungus is still growing inside Ellie's brain, so it'd be more likely that the mutation caused the fungus to facilitate a mutualistic relationship with the body versus the original parasitic one. It's been about 20 years since the initial outbreak at this point, so the fungus has had a significant amount of time to mutate. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Let us know what you thought in the comments below, and if you have any suggestions, leave those down there. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you next week. If you like this video, be sure to check out one of our other videos, or this one, and let us know what you think. Thanks so much!